and welcome to MTD CNC's podcast. I'm joined with Mr. Paul Jones, and we are currently at Star's headquarters in Derby. And the reason behind this podcast is basically because Star have got their open house event coming up from the 7th to the 9th of November. And I kind of want to quiz Paul and find out why this event is so popular year on year and what they've got new this year. Because they've got some UK premieres, haven't they, Paul? Yeah, and they always do have. And I think that's, you know, open houses are about showing off your new technology, um, showing how technology is advancing. And I always think with, uh, you know, an open house like Stars, which is a regular fixture in, in our calendar, we're going to be live here on the 8th of November, I think it yeah. is. Um, is seeing how these machines are becoming more capable, more versatile, and they're kind of drifting into arenas and areas of manufacturing where you would previously have, have had to use other technologies and other machines to make components. You know, the classic one is the milling capability of these machines now. You know, they're, they're, they're taking work in many instances from vertical machining centers and milling machines and being able to be done on these machines far quicker, um, you know, unmanned running so you can you can make them over longer periods of time really reducing costs costs down so yeah these it will be a great event to be at it will um i found recently when i've spoken to a lot of companies they're talking about and i think everyone's saying this about labor shortages and automation companies that never considered automation five years ago are now in that arena or considering to go into that arena and i feel like these are machines with a built-in automation they just keep running and running and running and you're telling me now that there's that element of going from just bar and turn to more prismatic components. Correct. Of in one. Yeah, and I think the point that you make about automation is, 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 is very apparent across industry. Uh, and if you can buy a machine that can take away, you know, um, headaches and take away labor intervention and still make the parts successfully. And let's, let's just not forget successfully first time round, but over longer periods of time. Yeah then you're gonna to start to look at other ways of making things. I mean, you look at the, ergo, the ergonomics and the footprints of the sliding head lathes, they're very compact, they're very small, so you can get lots into a, into a, you know, into a workshop, for example, mm -hmm. like they have here. So yeah. you can produce more parts in a, in a smaller area. It's quite interesting, there's quite, there's quite a few companies, when I go on like LinkedIn and I see pictures, and you see the color of star, and it's not one machine, but it's two, it's three, it's four, because once people are in this world and this arena, they continue and, and they, they literally love it. You can see machine shops full of these machines. So there's longevity there. Really. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think you see that as, as the open houses happen, they get bus busier and busier every year because people are, are interested in advancing, how, in advancing how they do things. Okay, let's talk about the individual technology that's on show then, the SP23. It's a new machine aimed at companies in need of sliding head technology. So would you say this is, this is that initial leap I, th I think it's quite interesting talking to Star and the guys here at Star that the SR series is their most popular range of sliding head lathes. And in fact, people watching this that have Star machines, there's a high likelihood that they have an SR machine. Um, those machines are really uh, aimed at, um, you know, are capable of machining complex parts, high value engineering, high value manufacturing is a lot of what we do here in the UK and it's where that range of machines lends itself to. But of course, around the world, that's kind of a different story. And some of the other models of star machines are more popular than the SR, purely because if you go to lower cost economies, they're making higher, vol you know, higher volume parts, less sophisticated parts. Therefore, they're buying lower cost machines. Um, the actual SP23 machine, which is uh, gonna be here on show, is a lower cost model. So in this market in the UK, where we are servicing those higher value manufacturing sectors, there is the need for the complex machines that, that we see and talk about here from Star all the time. But there is also a market for entry level types of machines, people first time into sliding head lathes. And the SP machine certainly is a capable machine. There's lots of tools, lots of versatility, um, but it is at a lower price point. So I think it will be something for people listening to this if they have thought about sliding head technology and thought well, their part doesn't warrant a machine that's got you know, multiple uh, you know, let's say a B axis on it, or you know, a, a addition more tools than they actually need mm. to make the part. Then the SP will be certainly an option for people to come and look at and see. That first leap, isn't it? Um, there is going to be a fixed head on here. Um, here is a preview. Come on to that in a few moments. And um, the SD23 
26 Type E. Now, this is the first showing in the UK, isn't it? Yeah, and that's interesting because last year there was the Type S, which is a double B axis machine. It's kind of the other end of what we were just talking yeah. about on the SP. Um, this is a machine where you can take really, really complex parts, you know, maybe med parts from the medical sector, parts that you need to machine uh, quickly, reliably, Accurately. lots of faces, lots of different operations. Um, this is really where the SD machine sits, and this SD26 Type E is uh, a machine in the family of the, of the uh, SD26, but it just has one B-axis on it. But I think what it will be showing here is a machine that's highly versatile, highly capable, and if, if you are a, a, a manufacturer who wants to do lots of one-hit machining of complicated parts, you know, in unmanned, you know, uh, in lights out, uh, in lights out environments, then this type of machine will be good to see. Well, let's take a step back a moment. Who, what's the issue happening in a machine shop where you would personally say you need to take that step into sliding head? What, what's going on? What, what am I machining? And I need to go, let's change my mindset. I, th I think that the um, one one making parts with with, a, with minimal changeovers is really important, yeah. and we're seeing that in in every machine tool manufacturer. They're trying to invent, develop whatever the term you want to use, machines that are able to basically put a, a piece of bar, a piece of stock on the machine, and come off with a finished part. Mm. Sliding heads limits become on the bar diameter. You know that's no secret. You know you, it, it depends on the size of the component. But if the size of the component is less than, you know, 45 millimeters or 40 millimeters or whatever it might be, then sliding head technology, the limits are really, you know, the opportunities to machine complex parts, regardless of materials, the, um, you know, difficult exotic materials, the tolerances you're trying to chase, all of those things can be now done on these machines because they're heavier, they're more, um, which gives you the ability to work uh, in, a, in a more stable environment. You've got more um, more tools on them, so you can you know you can do things like balance turning. You can get you know free hits essentially on your on your machining. So there's lots of things that will help a manufacturer who's trying to identify ways of of making parts faster, yeah. um, making parts really reliably. These machines offer them ways of doing that, and I think you've seen that in recent years. And I think you mentioned points about machine shops. We hear it all the time: uh, cost of energy yeah, going up, think? cost of labour going up, the cost of your unit, your building, your rent all going up, interest rates going up, you know, all of these things people start I to really look at. I really hope someone's listening to this and they go, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that's going on. It, it will is. be. I it don't even be. hope. I mean, and, I know and, someone will be not But they've still got to make those parts. Yes. So they now need yes. to look at those parts and go, right, okay, if that was taking me 40 minutes, I or I was it. making 300 in an hour or 600 in an hour, mm. I've got to now make 800 in an hour in order to cover my overhead to make a profit. So they've got to start exploring different ways of making parts. Can a sliding head lathe do that? It depends on the application, of course. But we are seeing, or Star will say they are seeing, manufacturers turning to them with components and going, look, you're telling me that these machines are really capable. Can you do this and how quickly can you do it? So I think, I think when people come here and they are exploring ways of getting those, that cost down, then this, this technology, you know, they're building these machines in order to be more capable to satisfy yeah. the needs of those people. So it's kind of like they're doing their bit. Chicken and the, and the egg. Yeah. yeah. Um, just a, a quick mention and a nod to the eco mode. It's a new software that um, Star have got that's helped to reduce the running costs because you mentioned about cost. Um, they, they will be talking about that during the open house event. So I just wanted to give And, and that, that really, in essence, what that will do is there's certain things on the machine that when it's in an idle mode or it's not being used, they'll kind of power down. Yes. So, you know, again, we're just making sure that just you're paying attention. Increment, yeah, uh, yeah tiny increment. Um, okay, um, I did mention about the fixed head, didn't I? So they're previewing this. They're, yeah, the they're not known for this, are they? No, the SK51 is fixed head technology. Um, twin turret, two uh, 12 station turrets, twin spindle machine, uh, operated using a Fanuc IHMI control well, we with, with, with the latest advanced features yeah, yeah. on it. Do you work for Star? <laughs> <laughs> it's taken a lot of uh, consuming <laughs> to, to get all this out. But now it's a real interest to me, uh, the machine tool sector, so stuff like this is always a, a pleasure to learn. But Fixed Head, they'll be previewing it here. I think they uh, are looking to um, just to show off that they, they, they do have that style of machine. And, and listen, if you, if you have a sliding head machine from Star and and you're doing bigger bar diameters, maybe you are up to you know two inch bar or what have you, then a fixed head machine is something that you're likely to lean towards. So come here, you'll be able to see it and preview it. You know, you just said, it, it, you, listening to this, you don't have to be somebody who 
has already, uh, you know, how can I explain? You're not always having to be a new customer to come to these events. You could already have 10 stars that may, may have uh, new staff members coming in, um, coming into your company, and maybe they're not totally comfortable with the star machine. And you've got like NC Assist, you've got engineers here, so actually it might be a good refresher uh, for people mm. who have got machines that want, you know, they're, they're developing as a company all the time with their softwares and everything. So it's worth actually just touching base and going, actually, that might be a problem I come up with, and just asking the team and going, because they've got NC Assist and that's a programming software. Well, yeah, I mean, that can how help many times, this is, a, this is it's a good point, and I'm glad it's on the list, because how many times do you go and buy something? Whenever you buy something, electrical goods, whatever it might be, a car maybe. That day, the day you bought it. Or, or yeah, but when you get in it, you, well, one of the things, maybe not so much with some of the ones I've mentioned, but there is always, there is a purchase that you will make that you will consider not buying it because you're worried it's going to be too difficult to operate, oh, okay, to use, to get mean. to grips with. Yeah. Okay, so a barrier to entry might be for somebody looking at what we're talking about here and going, that part, how on earth am I going to program a part as that complex on yeah. a machine like this without making a mistake, without scrapping the parts? Do they make it easy for me? Well, yes, they do with the NC Assist, and it doesn't matter whether it's two-channel, three-channel, however complicated the machines are these break it down and make it simple. So they kind of go in, do you know what, if you like what you see, don't worry about the operation, that'll be simple to we'll get look to after you. With. And yeah. I think that's the thing, is that there's always something going on in the background. So you get something, but there's always like a new version that's been worked on, that's been developed. So mm. that's really important. And it is, and if you imagine these machines, when you see them in machining a complex part and you've got three operations happen at once, essentially what you're doing with NC Assist is building three different programs, mm. and then they all kind of come together yeah. to work seamlessly in order to make together. the part. Uh, step cycle pro, that's always a big topic. Um, I've heard such rave reviews about this from engineers on the shop floor. Um, Armeg one, for example, the, the machinist loved it. It's changed, it's changed so much in the sliding head world. It, it's changed a lot in the machining world, um, you know, facilities like this, because it just, some of the challenges that manufacturers may have faced previously with uh, materials chipping them in the in the machining process or they couldn't for example before something like step cycle pro so what happened is they were having to man the machines they were having to stop the machines get in and take out the the, the tangled swarf that's wrapped around the parts that stops you know that costs you time it costs you money so it might have been a reason that you actually didn't invest in a machine because you've gone you know what my materials I, I can't chip it effectively, therefore I'm not going to get unmanned running, therefore it's not going to run lights out, I'm not going to be able to get the benefit of the technology, so I'm not going to buy a machine. With Step Cycle Pro, now any of that kind of tangling swarf, um, any of those things that would stop the machine, it's kind of a thing of the past on yeah. the right materials, of course. Uh, and the way it does it, it does it really successfully, and um, yeah, it gives you that ability now to run what you may have not been able to do before, without having intervention you can run it overnight you might have to back off slightly on cycle times perhaps but yeah. um, and the, the but beauty of it is, 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 it well. is try before you buy oh, with yes, the step cycle pro so any machine that you buy from star will be installed in your machine shop and then you can use uh forgive me i can't remember the exact term i think it's like a a, a manual mode or something yeah. you can use you can run a one-off using step cycle pro so you can see the advantage it has to that particular component and or application so. And then if you like it, you can then purchase it and you can then use it on, uh, you know, on your batch run. So it's there, it's ready to use, it's just the, f the flick of a switch really. Um, there's loads. There is. We've only mentioned three machines. New bar feeds as well here, yeah. some of the bar feeds Well, there's here. always partners, isn't there? There's always partners at these events because they're not, a lot of the time, it's all about the whole solution. So they're not just part of getting a machine and saying, that's it, we'll leave you to it. It's all about their partners and how they can make the whole solution for you. So. Yeah, from the 7th to the 9th of November, um, Star will be holding their open house. Come along, there's always a bit of lunch as well, but another thing about these open house events is networking with other people who have similar issues to you and talking to, I hate the word networking, mm. but it's true, is you're talking to others who have got maybe years worth of experience with these machines and you're asking them questions saying, how are you doing this? How are you doing that? And it's great to get together. I think over COVID and stuff, we forgot that and it is so so vital to well, do I that. Well, I think this is, and this is a prime time for companies like this. This is a prime opportunity for businesses that that are facing squeezes, that are facing 
you know, obstacles that they've not before to look at new ways and new methods. And, and I think from talking to the guys here at Star, the, the, these, are, these are times when these machines will begin to excel, they'll begin to um, be found in new users and new companies. And really it's, you know, it, it, it's a journey worth exploring if you're in manufacturing for sure. There you go, 7th to the 9th of November.